Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here, and this time I want to talk to you about loops. I've recently had a few students come to me with the same sorts of questions about loops, that even though loops are something, and especially for loops, are something that we talk about and use all the time in Python, they tend to be confusing for newcomers, and especially that variable that we're setting in the loop. So I want to try to set a whole bunch of these things to rest, try to clarify what's going on with the loops. So let's start off with something really simple. If I say here S equals A, B, C, D, and I want to print each and every one of the letters in this string. So I could say print S of zero, and then print S of one, and print S of two, and then print S of three. And guess what? This will work. I can actually use this to print all of the letters in S. And it doesn't matter if they're letters or characters, that's really not important right now. So what's wrong with this code? This code actually works, right? And as I like to say, unfortunately, this code works. So the problem is that this violates, this code violates the rule of dry. Don't repeat yourself. And the whole idea of dry is that people are smart but slow, and computers are stupid and fast. So if I can have a computer do the same thing again and again and again, why should I spend my time repeating? Why did I write these four lines? I should be able to write it once and let the computer do the hard work of repeating it. So I should not repeat myself. And when I see code that repeats itself in this way, this should be a red light. This should be a red light that tells me, no, no, something is going wrong. So how can I do it? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to use a for loop. And a for loop basically means, for loop says, let's repeat the same code a number of times with slight variation. Actually, yeah, let's say uh, this was like slight variation each time. What's the variation? Each time we'll get a different character from S, our string. Okay, what am I talking about? So I'm going to say once again, S equals A, B, C, D. And then I'm going to say here for one letter in S, print one letter. So what's going on here? And this is where people get really, really confused, so I want to focus on it. The for loop turns to S, turns to the string and says, hey S, are you iterable? Can I run a loop on you? Assuming S says yes, and in the case of a string, the answer is yes, this is where, again, things get tricky. So the for loop says to S, give me your next thing. And the next thing, would be the first thing, is going to be A. That A, the string A, is assigned to one letter. Right then, right there at the top of the loop, that's when it's assigned to one letter. And then the loop body runs. And then we come back, and the for loop says, hey, do you have something next for me? And the answer is yes. Here's a B. And B is assigned to one letter. And then the loop body runs. And then the for loop comes back and says, do you have something more for me? Yes, C is assigned to one letter. And then, again, D is assigned to one letter. And then finally, at the end, the string says, nope, nothing more to give you and the loop ends. Now this answers a whole bunch of questions about that people have had. First of all, how much influence does this variable name have on what we get with each iteration? None, none whatsoever. I can call this variable whatever I want. The name of the variable is for me and for other people who are gonna be maintaining my code, including, as people like to say, future me. Because if I come back to this code a year from now and I say, you know, I don't know, uh, I say uh, tangerine. Will this work? Oh yeah, it'll work just great. But will I understand what's going on? No way. Right, so I can call my variables whatever I want, but I really want to give them good, useful names that will explain things. So I go back here and I change this to one letter because that makes sense. But it has no influence on what I get in each loop. A second question people often ask me is, well, does the variable have to exist before the loop? Don't I have to define it before? And the answer is no. The variable is defined right here in the loop body. Well, I should say not a loop body, but in the for loop. Now, right, so I can use whatever variable I want. By the way, if you use a variable that already exists, that was defined elsewhere in the program, it will be stepped on, it will be overwritten by a for loop. So if I say here, one letter equals Z, and then one letter for one letter, as I say print, you know, after everything, one letter equals one letter. Watch what happens. After everything, one letter equals D. Why? Because 
we've completely assigned, we've completely stepped on this original value. One letter has now gotten A, then B, then C, then D, and after the loop is over, it continues to be there. So you can use whatever variable name you want, but you should use something that's normal. The variable is created, if it doesn't already exist, right here on line 10. Now, I think one of the other things that is confusing to people is like, we have this for, we have this in, it's like a two-part syntax. It's not like if was just one word, or while where it's one word, or def where it's one word. It is for variable in object. And that continues no matter what we're iterating over. So if I say for one item in 10, 20, 30, print one item. So what's happening here? The for loop turns to the list and it says, hey list, are you iterable? And the answer is yes. So we get 10. So what's going to happen here? Once again, one item, it's going to basically say one item or one item equals 10. We go through the loop body. Then it says one item equals 20. We go through the loop body. One item equals 30. We go through the loop body. One item and we're all out. You know, nothing more to give you. More to give you. What if I iterate over a file? I can say for one line in open Etsy password, my favorite punching value for a file. I can say print len of one line. I'm going to say n equals space here. Right? And the reason I'm doing that is, you know, don't go down one line after printing. And then it's just going to like print horizontally, so I don't have to worry about all those lines that are going to be there. Again, what happens here? The for loop turns to the file object and says, are you iterable? The answer is yes. And so we get first line assigned to one line. And then the second line is assigned to one line. Then the third line is assigned to one line. And we go through each line in the file, one line at a time, with each line, a string, being assigned to the variable one line, which could be called anything, but I decide to call it one line because I want to know what my program is doing when I have to maintain it a year from now. And then it goes through it one by one by one. What we also see is that the for loop has no idea what we're going to be getting with each iteration or how many we're going to get with each iteration. That is determined 100% by the object that we are iterating over. So what do we get from things when we iterate over them? You know, what do we get when we iterate? Well, if we iterate over a string, we get the characters. We have one, you know, strings of length one. We don't really have characters in Python. But in a list, I get the elements of the list. If I iterate over a tuple, then we get the elements, elements of the tuple. If I iterate over a dictionary, I get the keys. If I iterate over dict items, which is a method we can call, then I get a tuple with a key with each key and value. And if I iterate over a file, I get the lines of the file, and so on and so forth. So it's always up to the object. The loop has nothing to do with how many and nothing to do with what we get. That's all up to the object. Now, I want to just go back to the first example that I had here of printing A, B, C, D. I'm going to get rid of the Z stuff down here. All right. And I just want to like expand it as like, one last final thing to try to make this clear. Because again, this is a loop and it works just fine. But if I were not to have loops, what if life didn't include loops? Oh, how sad it would be. Okay. That's ridiculous. Anyway. So how would this look if I didn't have a loop? Well, I would say here, s equals a, b, c, d, and then we would have to repeat four times. I would say something like this. I would say i equals zero, and then I'd say well, one letter equals s of i, and I'd say print one letter. And then you know what I have to do? I have to repeat myself. Me, smart but slow human, I would have to say i equals one, and then i equals two, then i equals three, and is this going to print all the letters in S? I absolutely will. The only good reason to do this is if you're paid by the other friends. Don't do this. Don't do this. Right? Now, there's another subtle piece here that people are constantly bugged by if they come from other programming languages. They think Python's for loops work like this. That we're going to first get index 0, then index 1, then index 2, then index 3. And they're like, where's the index? When I'm iterating over a string, where is index 0? Where is index 1? Where are the indexes? And the answer is, we don't need them in Python. In Python, again, the for loop turns to the object and says the object, you tell me what's next. You tell me what you're going to supply me with. I'm not going to tell you what index. I'm going to not tell you how many. I'm not going to tell you anything. The loops in Python are relatively weak compared with loops in other languages in that we sort of let the object do the driving and the decision making. So what I just did here of expanding this, we said one letter equals one letter equals one letter equals, all that is true. The only part that's not true in Python is this whole i index thing. 
That does not exist unless you really want to. And that's my final point here. People who come from other languages with indexes are often sort of, I don't know, you know, they're homesick for indexes, as it were. They really want to have it. So how can I, you know, iterate over S using the length and index? Well, I can always say for I in range of len S. What the heck is going on there? Well, len S is going to give me the length of that string. And range is a special function in Python, a special class in Python, called a callable in Python, that will give us all the numbers, range will return, one by one, the numbers from zero until not including len of s. I can say print s of i. So first, it's going to give me zero. Right? And what's going to happen? The for loop turns the range len s. It says, are you eligible? Yes. What's your next thing? That's zero. So we then say i is zero. Then we run the loop body, printing s of zero. Then i is one, print s of one. i is two. i is three. I is up, that's it. No more. Loop ends. Now you can do this in Python, but no one does. And the reason that no one does is why would I do this? Why would I use the index to get the characters when I can just get the characters all by myself? So I know that C programmers love to do this sort of loop, and they sort of miss having this kind of loop in Python, but you don't need it. Because what's really interesting to us is the elements of the string, elements of the list, elements of whatever it's going to be, not the index. The index is a means to an end. Don't treat it as an end in and of itself. All right, I hope that this was helpful in explaining loops and loop variables and what's going on. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can always get to me on Twitter, you get to me via email. Don't forget that I also produce a free weekly newsletter all about Python. It's called Better Developers, and you can get it online at betterdevelopersweekly.com. Thanks so much, and I'll be back soon with another variable explaining Python.